Welcome to the GCN Racing News Show. This week, we celebrate the return of the cobbles. That's right, men's and women's Omlop Het Newsblad and men's Kerner Brussels Kerner. Plus, Middle Eastern racing concludes in Abu Dhabi. And as if Belgium wasn't cold enough, we head north to Alaska. We always look forward to Omlop Het Newsblad, and this year did not disappoint. When you turn the TV on with 80 k to go and there are a smattering of riders all over the place, you know you've got some fantastic racing on the cars. But the big news in the build-up to this year was that the races used the iconic combination of the climbs of the Kapelmuir and Bosberg in the finale, a nod to the heritage of the Tour of Flanders. After what had been an aggressive race, the men's peloton had regrouped before the first of those two climbs, and the Muir proved to be as selective as we've come to expect. In fact, it was there that we saw the pre-race favourite, Greg Van Avermaet, perhaps not looking quite as strong as we'd have thought. Not next to Sepp Van Mark, at least, who powered up the cobbles to the chapel, with Van Avermaet unable to follow. Denek Stibar joined Van Mark, but there was another regrouping before the Bosberg. There, the pain was etched on the riders' faces, but that final climb did not prove decisive, and in the end, having numbers in the front group proved to be the most important factor. Astana, perhaps motivated by the team's current dire financial situation, more on that in tomorrow's GCN show, managed to place three riders in a group of 11, which also, incidentally, contained cyclocross world champion Wout van Aert. Ultimately, it was Michael Volgren who timed things to perfection. He made a stinging attack with two and a half kilometers remaining, and with a moment's hesitation behind, he quickly built an unassailable lead to take the biggest win of his career. The women's event saw the first outing of Chantal Black in her world champion's jersey. Also making their season debuts were Belgian champion Jolien Dor and 2017 Tour of Flanders winner Corinne Rivera. Like the men's race, there was a general regrouping before the Muir, leaving a 30-rider sprint. And leading the charge was young Christina Siegard, who unleashed a devastating seated sprint to take the first win of her career, and what a race to do it in. In second was actually friend of the channel, Alexis Ryan, herself still just 23 years of age, and they left some very big names trailing in their wake. A little bit of trivia for you now, though. This is the first time that a Dane has won the men's or the women's event, and now, of course, they've done the double. And further emphasizing the current level of Danish cycling is the fact that Sigard rides for Danish squad at Team Virtue Cycling, and it is she who is this week's Rider of the Week. The following day saw the men move on to Kerner Brussels Kerner, a semi-classic that often ends in a reduced bunch sprint, despite a smattering of cobble climbs, and that is exactly what we got. Dylan Groenewegen timed things perfectly to take arguably his biggest one-day win to date. There was heartbreak, though, for Team Dimension Data's Julian Vermott, who finished ninth, having been part of a late three-man breakaway that was caught inside the last 100 metres. It's a promising start, though, and this is the first year that he's had a little bit of freedom in the classics, having moved away from the quick-step team. The women's peloton, meanwhile, raced in the Omlope Van Het Hageland, and teamwork was the name of the game. Team Sunweb drilled it into the last climb to set up Ellen van Dijk, who duly attacked and was never seen again. Over in Abu Dhabi, the first three days were a sprinter's delight. Well, most sprinters, anyway. Less than delighted was Mark Cavendish, who crashed in the neutral zone on stage one after the lead car allegedly braked of its own accord, and he was forced to withdraw with concussion and whiplash. Alexander Kristoff took stage one, Elia Viviani won the following day, and then on stage three, Team Sunweb's Phil Bauhaus took the biggest win of his career, pipping a fast-finishing Marcel Kittel to the line. This year saw the addition of an individual time trial for the first time, although the expected battle between specialist Rowan Dennis and world champion Tom de Moulin was thwarted when the latter had a mechanical, which we stress is nothing at all to do with the fact that Dan had taken a close inspection of his bike the previous day. Dennis won the stage and took the jersey, setting up a thrilling final climb to Jabel Hafit on the last day. The big attack started with seven kilometers remaining, and it wasn't a surprise to see Alejandro Valverde lighting the touch paper. Able to go with him were Miguel Angel Lopez and Julien Alaphilippe, while behind, Tom de Moulin rode a typically steady tempo to keep teammate Wilco Kelderman in touch. 
With just over four Ks to go though, Superman took flight and nobody initially followed. Valverde though almost seems on better form than ever. He counted one kilometers later and crossed a large gap in next to no time. And as the two came to the line together, neither the stage victory nor the GC was ever really in doubt. Two stage races, two overall wins this year for Alejandro Valverde. Meanwhile, Dumoulin got his second mechanical in two days and his frustration was visible for all to see. We'd give this bike throw a two out of 10 though. It's quite a poor effort really. Now Dan was on the ground for the whole week, so make sure you head over to GCN Tech to see his report, including a look at the brand new Cannondale Aero bike. Before we finish with road racing, there were a couple of one days in France, again dominated by French riders. It was good to see Romain Bardet back from his injury and winning already at the, wait for it, Fond Environnement Classique de l'Ardèche Rhône Crusol, while Liliane Camgin won the Royal Bernard Drôme Classic. Right, we are going to finish with the results of the legendary Edita Sport event in Alaska. That's right, Alaska. In February. In fact, this race was the reason that fat bikes were invented, literally. Bike riders raced against skiers who raced against runners over 281 kilometers of snow, rolling hills, frozen lakes, and rivers. Andrew Cunningham came in first place biker in one day, 22 hours, 39 minutes, and two races are still going, the extreme and the impossible as well. Apparently, the bikers in the extreme are on their way to Tin Creek Tent Camp now. They had to dry out yesterday due to a massive overflow up to their thighs. Woolly hats off to all of the competitors. Well, that's it for this week. Next weekend, we move to Tuscany for the gravel roads of the men's and women's Strada Bianca and start what looks set to be a very cold Paris-Nice. And more Belgian fun with Dwarf Store West Vlaanderen and Le Samin. Now, please give this a big thumbs up if you like racing news, and if you wanna watch another video here on GCN, why not check out our presenter profile video with latest recruit, Emma Pooley. That one is just down there.